How do solar panels work? What are they made of? Can they harm your health? We're answering these questions and more in today's video. So stay tuned because today we're going over the facts about solar panels, their safety, and debunking some common myths. Hi, I'm Diego Lopez Duran, and welcome back to Going Solar with Pivot Energy, where we cover all things solar energy, commercial solar, financial incentives, and community solar. It's normal and expected to have questions about solar and its safety. I can assure you, our team has heard all the questions and wants to empower you to feel confident and knowledgeable about your business's solar installation or the local community solar project down the street from you. Let's get into it. First, it's important to learn about the makeup and function of a solar panel in order to understand why solar panels are safe. Solar panels are made up of multiple solar photovoltaic cells or PV cells for short that all work together to generate electricity. The cells absorb the sunlight and then use that energy to create an electrical current that is captured and transferred to wires. You've probably heard of photosynthesis before which is how plants convert sunlight into energy. Photosynthesis and solar cell conversion have a similar process. We can break down this photovoltaic effect into three basic steps. First, the PV cells absorb light, which in turn knocks electrons loose. Those loose electrons start to flow in one direction, creating an electrical current. Finally, the electric current is transferred to wires via conductive metals. It's worth noting that one PV cell on its own it can't produce enough energy to power an entire home or a building. Solar panels are made up of 32, 48, 72, or even 96 solar cells, which is what allows them to power large homes, buildings, commercial solar systems, and solar farm. To learn more, check out our video, Solar Energy Explained, linked in the description. And while you're at it, subscribe and hit the bell icon below so you won't miss future videos like this one. All right, so now that you know how solar panels work, let's break down what materials they're made of. The components of a solar panel are metal, plastic, glass, and wiring apparatuses. They also use semiconductors, typically made out of silicone. A semiconductor is a material that conducts electricity better than materials like wire and fiber, but not as well as conductors like metal. Silicone is the most common semiconductor material used in solar cells because it's effective and affordable. It's also the second most abundant material on Earth after oxygen, which is why you'll also find it in technology like computer chips. Solar cells made from silicone are highly efficient, inexpensive, and have a long lifespan. Modules are expected to last for 25 years or more, still producing more than 80% of their original power after this time. Solar cells are connected to a set of wiring that then connect with a conductive material like aluminum. All of this is arranged within a frame and contained inside a glass or plastic protective casing that houses all of the components. Then there's the back of a solar panel which is called a back sheet and provides insulation from electrical components of the panel. So if you've learned something new so far, give this video a thumbs up. We also have videos on bifacial and monofacial facial solar panels if you want to dig in deeper. So far, we've covered the components and function of a solar panel. But what about where the raw materials of solar panels come from? Solar panel components are created all over the world. And for many reasons, it's important to understand where these materials originate. At Pivot, we ensure in our manufacturer selection process that potential vendors provide the necessary information concerning UF LPA compliance, which requires clear and convincing evidence that all goods, wares, articles, or merchandise were not produced using forced labor. Combining national standards with proper bookkeeping, we maintain detailed records of all sourcing locations for our raw materials and components. Now that we have all that information covered, let's tackle a couple of common myths and questions. First up, do solar panels emit radiation? Since solar panels use materials that turn the sun's radiation into electricity, it's not uncommon for people to worry about potential radiation from solar energy. To explore this, 
we need to define radiation, which is any electromagnetic wave and particle. The most common radiation waves are gamma, X, infrared, ultraviolet, terahertz, megahertz, gigahertz, and radio waves. These types of radiation are divided into two categories called ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, which is determined by whether or not small doses of them are harmful. Ionizing radiation is typically emitted from UV light sources, gamma rays, and X-rays. These types of ionizing radiation tend to be the most cancer-causing and DNA-altering, so it's advised that people wear a protective lead layer in their presence. Then, there's non-ionizing radiation, which is emitted from light sources like light bulbs, ovens, gigahertz from Wi-Fi systems, and standard radio waves that enter car radio systems. Like many other common household devices, electricity from solar panels and inverters emits an extremely weak non-ionizing electromagnetic field, or EMF the kind that does not cause cancer. Notably, the EMF originated from a solar system is less than EMF from everyday objects such as cell phones, radios, and microwaves. After extensive research, there is no evidence that exposure to low-level electromagnetic fields is harmful to human health, according to the World Health Organization. All of Pivot's community solar garden or small-scale utility projects are surrounded by fencing. In our experience, we found that any EMF returns to ambient typically within the distance of the array to its own fence line. That brings me to another question that we hear. Is living near a solar farm or installation dangerous? Rest assured, living near a solar farm is not dangerous. Solar arrays don't produce any emissions, pollution, or other outward hazards. They don't contain liquids that can leak or impact the level of sunlight experienced by people who live near them. Like I mentioned before, the hazardous materials sometimes discussed regarding solar panels are all safely contained within the panels themselves. At the end of the panel's life, they're carefully recycled or disposed of in a way that doesn't pose danger to anyone living nearby. Reusable materials like glass, metal, and wiring are recycled. The silicone is chemically recycled or safely disposed of. Studies show that the chemical components of a solar panel don't leach into the environment from properly installed and functioning solar panels, even during storms or fires. In fact, even damaged solar panels pass the EPA's toxic characteristic leaching procedure test, which evaluates the potential for hazardous materials to leach into the groundwater. This means that solar panels are non-hazardous. So when it comes to questions and myths around solar, how do we discern fact from fiction? As with anything, it's critical to pay attention to the source of information you're consuming. As a certified B Corp, Pivot Energy is a trusted company that goes above and beyond in giving back to the communities we provide clean energy to. It's our mission to be a positive influence on everyone that we work with along the journey to accelerate the clean energy transition. If you have any questions about solar, commercial solar, or community solar, or shared solar initiatives in your area, don't hesitate to reach out to me via my email listed in the description below. You can also comment with any questions and my team of solar experts and I will get right back to you. If you're interested in starting a commercial solar project or signing up for community solar, check out these videos linked below or head to pivotenergy.net to get started. If this video helped you understand solar safety and how solar works, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified when we post new videos on commercial solar, solar incentives, and community solar. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.